Since 6 June 2000, the tactical high-energy laser has shot down 28 operational Katusha rockets, including single and multiple rocket salvos and incoming artillery rockets simulating a surprise attack. The system next faced another threat for which there has never been a defense, artillery projectors. A plane at Kirtland Air Force Base has been blasting some targets at White Sands missile range the past few months, but it's not using bullets or bombs. Its weapon is a laser. As Bob Martin now reports, the Air Force has just released some new video of the futuristic weapon at work. You are looking through the sights of the advanced tactical laser on board a C-130 from Kirtland Air Force Base orbiting high above an unmanned and stationary target vehicle at the Army's White Sands Missile Range. This is the first time the weapon was successfully fired at a target with the intent of damaging. Boeing are also developing another laser that is mounted on a 747 jetliner and designed to shoot down enemy missiles. Next is the close combat version called the Advanced Tactical Laser. Carried on much smaller aircraft like the latest Joint Strike fighter planes, the ATL is every bit as deadly, taking out air and ground targets with incredible stealth. My name is Don Phillips. I was in the United States Air Force and uh, had worked with certain intelligence agencies of the United States government. Prior to my Air Force, uh, uh, prior to joining the Air Force, I worked for the famous Lockheed Skunk Works. And I was working for them when I was attending college, and I worked, them, I worked for them in the capacity as a design engineer. In 1966, early in the morning, about 1 to 2 a.m., I was sleeping, I was staying there on base, and our barracks were at about mm, 8,000 feet. I heard a lot of commotion, you know, at that altitude, sound carries. 
Sound carries tremendously. And I thought, well, it's early in the morning, it's summertime, and there is a lot, it's very warm, and maybe I should get up and take a look. I didn't really want to, but I got up and took a look, walked up to the main road up near my office, which was the commander's office. I was on the commander's staff, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Evans. And I couldn't, I, I was saying, who's making all this noise? Who's making all this noise at this time of the morning? So when I got within about 50 yards of the five, four or five people that were standing there, one being the chief of security, they were looking up in the air, and I said, gee, they all, their heads are all head, uh, looking at the same direction. Well, I looked up to the west, northwest, and to my amazement, there were lights flashing around the sky, moving at anywhere from what seemed like 2,400 uh, 2, to about 3,800 miles per hour. Now, the fact that we're taking an estimate from a distance uh, you know, we figure, well, this is this is quite something. However, we continue to watch these fly, these darting lights go across the sky and stop, absolutely stop, come to a dead stop, and reverse in an acute angle their direction, and then proceed on in sort of. They were traveling so fast that you could almost see a pattern left by if you are computer people. When you move a mouse real quick across the screen, you see a little bit of a tail. Well, that's exactly the way these six or seven craft work. After five minutes of watching these things, they all seemed to group up to the west-northwest. Okay? They started to come in on a circle. But what I would like to point out is that where they were putting on their display in the north-northwest sky, just directly east of that is what is known as Area 51. Area 51 is a AEC name, okay? Atomic Energy Commission. That was the old name for Atomic Energy Commission. We knew it as the Groom Lake Flight Test Facility in the Air Force. And it was where we tested our aircraft at the, after we got the prototype made from the Skunk Works. So here are these, let's get back to the circle in the sky. What they did was coalesce and, and started rotating in a circle, and then they disappeared. Well, I thought, gee, this is something that we have to keep quiet. And that was verified by the chief of security. But we waited there and talked it over for a little bit. And it seemed like, I think it was an hour. Then came the radar people from the scopes, which were at 10,000 plus feet, came down for their dinner at 2 o'clock in the morning. And the first person off the bus was a good friend of mine, Anthony Kesar. He said, he was white as a sheet, and he says, did you see that? Yeah, we all said, yeah, yeah, it was a nice display. What a show. He says, we documented them on radar. And he says, we didn't give them clearance. We just, the standing order was let them fly through the radar beam. He says, we documented six to seven UFOs. Now, we don't know who was guiding those, but they were certainly intelligent. And uh, we don't know where they landed because they coalesced and disappeared. So. I will say at this point, to keep it short, that I will testify under oath as to what I say is true, and I will do so before Congress. Thank you.